Good morning, one and all. This is Dabya, Assistant Professor, Bard Institute of Law. In this video lecture, I'm going to discuss about the registration of trade union under the Trade Union Act 1926. In this session, I'll be discussing the definitions of trade union and trade dispute and the procedure, how the registration has been taken place and what are the rights and liabilities of a registered trade union. In general, we know what is a union is. A union is a collection of members who have the common interest. Likewise, a trade union is an organization of the workers who act collectively in order to protect all their rights and also to promote their welfare measures. This act of uh, acting collectively against the management is called as collective bargaining. Next is, this act is regulating the relationship between the workers and the employers and among the workers and among the employers. Unless we define what is the relationship between these two persons, it would be very difficult for us to understand what is their rights and what is their bounded duties. Unless we know what is their responsibilities, we cannot find whether their rights has been infringed or not. Unless we find what is the infringement is there, we cannot impose the proper law to rectify the demand or to resolve any disputes among them. So defining or understanding their relationship is very important thing. And this act do that, uh, do as uh, help us to understand the relationship between the worker and the employer, as well as uh, it helps us to understand the relationship among the workers and among the employers also. This is one of the merit of this act. Next is the objectives of trade union act. So the first objective of this act is to ensure the security of the workers. That is, every worker has to be protected to a, extent, uh, to a greater extent uh, that no person will be exploited by the management. Before independence uh, or before this act, we, if we see every worker will be exploited by the management to a greater extent. Uh, without paying proper wages, they'll be uh, extracting all the workers from all the works from the workers and uh, the proper working condition and the proper working hours will not be properly defined so that uh, all the 24 hours without proper rest, uh, all the uh, workers will be working for the employers. Uh, so these sorts of exploitation must be reduced. So this is the first objective of this act to ensure the security of the workers and also no person shall be uh, dismissed without any proper reason uh, or without pay, uh, being paid for his uh, work. Uh, so that security must be given for the workers. And next is to obtain a better economic returns. That is, for every work, they have to be given a proper economic returns. No person is working uh, for free. So every person uh, has to be given a proper remuneration. So they have to be given proper security in terms of working conditions and how their wage has been paid. Everything uh, in prior sense, they have to be defined properly. For example, working condition means how many hours of work they have to be work, uh, they have to work and uh, how many uh, amount of wages uh, will be paid for the workers and in what date uh, such payment has, uh, will be made, everything has to be defined properly uh, so that the workers will not be exploited by the man, uh, management, that is by the employers. And next is to obtain a better economic returns. Every person is working uh, only to get a proper remuneration. So in that case, uh, the proper economic return for their work must be given. Next is power to influence the management. That uh, they have the power to influence the management in taking any decision for the uh, establishment or some other cause. And if any single person is being uh, affected or the group of people or the whole workman uh, community is being affected by any company's policy or change of time uh, in any other case, uh, they'll have the power to collectively bargain or negotiate against the management to uh, change the policies, um, which is adversely affecting uh, the workman. So such influence uh, power uh, is given because of this trade union. Next is power to influence the government. And also, if any government policy is uh, if, uh, affecting all these workmans regarding their payment or the working conditions or whatever it is, 
they have the power to influence the government also the one basic thing is they are collectively in number and uh, everyone has the common interest to talk against the management or the government so as the number of people who is uh, threatening the uh, management that is uh, threatening to strikes or some other cause so it is uh, large in number so everyone whatever uh, the power does the management or the government has it has to bound between all these uh, workers so these are all the objectives of trade union act so it gives a merit uh, to the workmen next so these definition uh, which we have discussed now is uh, a common definition that is a common knowledge common sense uh, who we have but now we are going to discuss a proper trade union definition which has been mentioned under the trade union act 1926 under section 2h uh, actually it is a single definition i have given it in three points to give a clear picture of this definition to you so first thing is there must be any combination combination of member is there must be a collection of member who have the common interest uh not a single person or two or more that must be a collection a combination of members must be there and it must be uh, in a temporary or in a permanent manner so temporary in the sense if if there is any specific cause or for any uh, single reason if you are uh, uh, willing to join together to raise their voice uh, for the if that cause has been uh, finalized or uh, been rectified means uh, the union will be uh, automatically dissolved so that type of union is called as temporary unions and the permanent one is for the permanent cause uh, so that must be any kind of combination must be there it may be a temporary or a permanent union the next is the combination is formed for the purpose of regulating the relations between the workman and the employer workman and the workman employer and the employee that is uh, the relationship has been regulating the workman and the employer or among the employers and among the employees next is for imposing restrictive condition on the conduct of any trade or business that is no person has the right or uh, right to do any unfair trade practices uh, so it is a restrictive condition for it. from the side of the employer as well as uh, from the side of employees no one is allowed to do any unfair trade practice so this is one kind of restrictive condition our next is any federation of two or more trade union is allowed that is a uh, federation in the sense amalgamation of any two or more trade unions for example if in a factory uh, if there are like for example five unions if, uh, there are five unions if any three union is willing to join together for any specific cause or in a permanent manner whatever it is uh, if the members of the trade union is willing to do that amalgamate between them uh, the maximum that is the majority of the member is willing to do that means they can easily amalgamate uh, between them so this federation is uh, allow uh, under this uh, trade union act so this is what the exact definition that has been given for trade union under this act in section 2h next is a uh, trade dispute uh, under section 2g uh, of this act which says that any dispute must be between the employer or the workman or among the workman or among the employees so for example uh, we have to understand what is a trade dispute first uh, because uh, unless we know what is a trade dispute we cannot easily implement the laws under these acts right so we have to understand uh, in the world there are many kinds of dispute for every kinds of dispute there are different uh, laws for there so in order to implement a proper law uh, we have to understand what uh, variety or what uh, kind of dispute it is so in uh, to implement all these trade union uh, laws we have to understand whether it is a trade dispute or not so trade dispute means uh, it must be a, a dispute uh, among the workers or among the employers or between the workmen and the employees this is one of the main condition and next is such trade dispute must be connected with the employment in uh, for any cause of employment reasons it must be connected uh for a, if any dispute uh for a workman uh, and an employer uh, for any personal reasons means it is not a trade dispute right so it must be connected with the employment 
uh, in, uh, connected with uh, employment reasons or non-employment or terms of employment or conditions of labor. So these are all the things like, like working conditions and whatever cause if they have any dispute means uh, such dispute is called as trade dispute. So this is what the definition that has been given under section 2G of the Trade, Dis uh, trade Union Act 1926. So for, uh, and, uh, until now we have understood what is a trade union is and what is a trade dispute is. Now we'll move on to the registration of trade union. So registration of trade union is a voluntary process and not a compulsory process. That is no trade union is compelled to register under the Trade Union Act. Since, under, uh, since our fundamental right is to uh, form any union, um, under Article 19 of uh, our Indian Constitution. So this is uh, our fundamental right given by uh, the Constitution to us. So no trade union is, uh, term, uh, will be termed as an illegal trade union uh, uh, only because of the reason it has not been registered. Okay, But if uh, a trade union has been formed or trade union or whatever, a union is formed against the country or uh, against the uh, principles of country only such unions will be considered as an illegal thing but a trade union which is not being registered is not an illegal trade union so it is just a voluntary process if you are willing to uh, apply for a registration certificate uh, it is up to the members of the trade union only so what is the difference between these registered and non-registered that is unregistered trade union means uh, only thing is the registered trade union will be getting certain privileges and immunities from the government but this unregistered trade union will not be getting all those immunities. Only these, is the, uh, these are the difference between the registered and uh, unregistered trade union. And, uh, and also the major condition for creating a trade union is the members of the trade union must be, uh, minimum seven members must be there to form a trade union. And also uh, at least uh, if, if uh, establishment has more number of workers, at least 10 percentage of them or 100, whichever is less, can form a trade union. And among them, seven members must be the worker of the trade union. So this says that even a non-worker of the establishment can also be a member of the trade union. Uh, for example, it may, that person may be an advocate or a doctor or an expert in certain field. So that person can also be a member of trade union, but at least seven members uh, must be the worker of such establishment. Even a uh, certain uh, person who is representing certain political party will also be a member of trade unions. So it is not a compulsory thing to be the worker of the establishment to be a member of a trade union. So these are all the basic conditions for registering a trade union. Next, we'll see uh, from uh, what is the uh, proper procedure of, for registration of a trade union. So registration of a trade union, uh, in that first we'll see uh, section three. Uh, in section three, it says about the appointment of the registrar. So a registrar is a person who will be certifying the trade union. So that person is being appointed under this section. Uh, and for along with uh, registrar, additional registrar and deputy registrar will also be uh, appointed under this section. And what is their power and what is their function is being properly uh, and in detail uh, they have mentioned under this section. So only this provision is giving authority for appointing a registrar. Next is section four. Section four says that minimum seven members must be uh, the member of uh, trade union to form a union. So if if for uh, any reasons in future, if for any uh, reason, uh, if any, uh, the, this seven members is being reduced in a sense, uh, then such union will be ceased to exist. Okay, for example, uh, if any person has been retired from the establishment or any person has been dismissed uh, due to some uh, um, offensive act in the factory, so in whatever the cases, if the seven member is ceased to exist, like five members, only five members are there, or if uh, any person is being withdrawn to be a member of such union. So in some, uh, sorry, such sort of cases, uh, the trade union will become invalid. So this is uh, the basic condition to form a trade union. So this is explained under section four of this act. Next is uh, section five, which says that application for registration that uh, in, if, 
um, we want to register the trade union um, and to get a certificate of registration from the registrar, we have to apply for the same to the registrar. Uh, along with the application, we have to um, attach certain copies uh, to the registrar. So I'll explain what are all those. First is the name, occupation and address of the member. So who are all the members? First, we have to take a list of members and for each member, we have to mention what is his name and what kind of occupation he is doing in this establishment. And next is what is his communicating address and in what way we can communicate that person. So all these information must be mentioned uh, along with the application. And next is the name of trade union. This is very important. So if we are uh, willing to form a trade union, we have to name it first. And such name must not be a copy of any other name or any other uh, business or union's name, whatever it is. So it, it, it must be a unique name. This uh, trade union must our name must be a unique and we have to mention the same along with the application. And next is the address of head office. So in which place we are going to have the head office must be mentioned and in what way we, uh, we can communicate the office must also be mentioned along with the application. Uh, in general, if we see uh, a company may have various branches in various places and such sort of things, the unions may also be having uh, various uh, branches. Uh, so we have to mention all those in the application. And next is the title, name, occupation, address of the office bearers. So office bearer uh, is a person uh, who holds certain uh, posts in the unions. So for example, he may be an accountant, he may be a secretary. Uh, whatever uh, post he is holding in the office uh, in the union must be mentioned and that person's title which what post he is holding in that uh, union must be mentioned and what is his name and what is his occupation and in what way that person can be communicated all these information has to be uh, mentioned along with the application uh, for registration and uh, as i've already mentioned that registration of a trade union is not a compulsory process it is a voluntary process so if any union has been existing for more period without being registered in a sense uh, after a certain period if they are willing to register it means uh, they have to um, give all the uh, rights and liabilities of the trade union uh, for the past years, for example, uh, we can take a union which has been functioning for five years and uh, in current, if they want to register it under the under registrar uh, means, uh, they have to mention uh, what or all the things they have done for all past five years. Like uh, a trade union uh, is a corporate person, right? So it can sue any other person or it can buy any property. Uh, so it can do any or any things it, it has a common seal so it is like a, a legal person so all the activities of such legal person has to be brought in front of the registrar for likewise if it has any rights like uh, or liabilities um like it uh, if any bro property has been brought uh, in the name of union the same has to be mentioned and if it uh, has um, taken any loan for any purpose means the same has to be mentioned to the register. So all the rights and liabilities of the union has to be brought into uh, brought uh, into the picture of uh, registrar along with the application form. So this is what mentioned under section five. Next is under uh, section six. Uh, which says that uh, what are all the things to be attached with the application for the registration of trade union. So first is the name of trade union, as I've mentioned be before. Uh, the next is the ob object of trade union. So what is the main purpose? What is their uh, willingness? Well, what is the purpose of this trade union has to be mentioned. And next is general funds. So general fund is a funds that has been collected uh, from the members of the trade union for certain reasons, like uh, they may have some insur uh, insurance policy or uh, for any other purpose like for education uh, related for enhancing their uh, uh, skills they may conduct any programs so for that purpose they may use this fund so all these money has been collected from the members and used for the members of the union so such funds is called as general fund next is the maintenance of list of members so how many members are there in this trade union has to be maintained uh, for example, uh, while they are creating this union, uh, there will be certain number of members and for uh, and for uh, later on certain members may be dismissed or retired or any new members uh, may be joined, uh, uh, may be joined uh, in this union. So such 
list of members has to be maintained. And next is the minimum subscription amount has to be paid that for every union, they'll be having certain minimum subscription amount for joining that union. Such amount has to be paid for uh, by each member to join uh, in such trade unions. And next is the disciplinary action against the members and procedure for imposition of fines. Um, if any person uh, does anything against the union or uh, does any unfair labor practices, uh, so such person uh, against that person, uh, the disciplinary action will be taken. So for that cost and uh, if the mem uh, the union is willing to impose certain fine against that person, so everything uh, they have to be accountable and everything has to be maintained in a proper register. And next is the manner in which the rules shall be amended later. So while they are starting, they'll be having certain set of norms uh, to run a union. But later on, uh, they may uh, there may be some need to change any norms. Uh, so such norms, uh, how in what way they will be changing such norms has to be mentioned in beforehand itself. For example, like voting in voting process, they may change the norms, or in any other special resolution they may take. So, in what manner they are willing to change their rules has to be mentioned. Next is the manner in which the office bearers are elected and removed. So, office bearers uh, may be elected, uh, may be removed for certain uh, reasons, like if they does anything against the union or um, if they uh, use the funds for their own personal cause or personal reasons so in such cases that person may be removed and a new person may be elected so what in what way they will be doing all these things has to be mentioned and next is the executive members and office bearers should be elected for the period of maximum three years so for every three years a new member or office bearer has to be elected and next is the funds of the trade union must be safeguarded account books should be maintained and annual audit is necessary so the as I mentioned, for every funds they are collecting from the members, a proper account has to be mentioned and in what way they are uh, uh, doing expenditure and in what way they are uh, spending all those money has to be mentioned. So every for every all these uh, for every these things they have to mention a proper account books. Next is the procedure of winding up of trade union has to be mentioned. That is uh, in what way they are uh, they'll be uh, winding up. The trade union has to be mentioned. Uh, so these are all the things they have to mention uh, during the time of uh, applying for the registration of a trade union. So next is uh, section seven, uh, alteration of trade union name. So in case uh, in future if they uh, are willing to change the name of uh, the trade union, uh, the same has to be done uh, with getting uh, the opinions of the members if the majority of the member is willing to change or alter the name of trade union then such uh, thing uh, may be proceeded further if not uh, the name of trade union cannot be changed this is explained under section 7 and section 9 is certificate of registration so after scrutinizing all these attachments and the application form uh, and everything, the registrar will be giving a certificate of registration. Um, certificate of registration. Uh, this is explained under section nine. Uh, next is uh, section nine A, uh, which says that workman should not be less than this. Also, I've explained earlier that uh, in an establishment, at least ten percentage or hundred members, whichever is less, has to be the member of a uni, uh, trade union. And among them, at least seven members must be uh, engaging uh, in any work in that establishment. So this is one of the basic condition. And next is section 10, which says that uh, if any uh, if any trade union uh, re registration certificate has been obtained by any union in uh, any wrongful manner, the same can be revoked by the uh, registrar. This is explained under section 10. Uh, so if any uh, certificate has been obtained by fraud, misappropriation or by mistake, uh, so and uh, if any members, number of members is ceased to exist, that is there must be at least seven members, right? So if that seven members is ceased to be exist in uh, union means, that union can be, uh, that registration certificate can be revoked by the trade union, uh, sorry, by the registrar. Uh, but the cancellation uh, cannot be revealed by the registrar. So once it is cancelled, it is cancelled. Uh, and uh, cannot like and if the trade 
union is being disobeying any rules and regulations are not following any norms that has been uh, given by the registrar are under the act if any rules and regulations are there and if they are not following the same so that union will also be cancelled that is their registration or uh, certificate will also be cancelled by the registrar next is uh, we can see the rights and liberties of a registration or uh, registration of trade union so first is right to admission that every person of an establishment has the right to join in any trade union if they are willing to join but the only condition is they'll be having certain subscription amount for uh, joining any member into their union that amount has to be paid by the member so for example a minimum subscription amount is 50 rupees for in just a case i'm saying so that amount, if a person is willing to pay that 50 rupee amount and to join, willing to join a member of that union, that person has to be admitted uh, for joining in, uh, into a union. Uh, next is right to represent uh, for any cause. If there is any uh, problem for each well member of that union, everyone can represent for that person. And next is right to own property. Uh, already I've said that a union is a corporate, uh, you, uh, a trade union has a corporate personality. So uh, it is a legal person. So it can sue another person or it can own a property, mobile or immobile property, whatever it is. So it is a legal person and it has the right to own property. Next is right to contract. Since it is a legal person, it can make, it can, uh, make any contract with, uh, with any other person. The next is right to amalgamate. Uh, right to amalgamate. Uh, this is also I've explained uh, in beforehand that is uh, if any two union, two or more union is willing to join together for any single cause or in a common manner uh, after getting opinions from all the members of the trade union, if the majority of the people is willing to amalgamate, then such unions can uh, amalgamate and form a single trade union. So this is up to uh, the members, uh, members decision only. So next is uh, right to inspect books and any member is willing to inspect the account books or any other registrar that uh, payment of proper uh, requisite fees, uh, any member can inspect any books of uh, union. Next is right to sue that uh, trade union can sue any other person and also in case of any issues or uh, like any other person can also sue uh, the trade unions. Next is the right to right of minors. Mm, that minor, even a minor who is working in an establishment can become a member of trade union. But the only thing is, he cannot be an office bearer. So office bearer is a person who has a certain title or certain uh, post uh, in uh, a trade union. So only those things will not be allowed for the minors, but he, uh, a minor can be a member of uh, trade union. So this right has been given to the minors. Next is disqualification of office bearers of trade union. So in case of any uh, thing that has been any unfair labor practices or if, if he does anything against the morality, that person will be disqualified to be an office bearer. And also if that person is being uh, in prison for uh, because of any offense he does, so that person will not be allowed to be an office bearer in trade union. So this is the disqualification of being an office bearer. Next is right to change name. Uh, so in, if uh, the members of the trade union is willing to change the name of the trade union, that can, uh, they can change the uh, name of the trade union by getting the opinion, majority of opinions or majority of uh, acceptance from the members of the trade union. Next is general funds. So general funds are the funds which can be used uh, for the members and being collected from the members also. So in case if they are uh, going for any legal proceedings or for any insurance policy or compensation related thing uh, or for uh, enhancement of skills, uh, they may conduct any programs. For all these purposes, they'll be using uh, these general funds. Uh, which is collected from the members only. Next is a separate fund for political purpose. Uh, in case if, a, if the union is willing to support any political party, uh, they may collect this political fund, but it's up to the member to pay or not. The general fund is a uh, compulsory thing that they have to pay. But in case of political fund, if the member is not willing to support that uh, political, political party, then he need not pay uh, this political fund. So this political fund is uh, it's up to the member to uh, pay or not. 
Next is criminal conspiracy that uh, in general uh, in IPC we have seen what is criminal conspiracy is that we are uh, making certain plan against uh, any other person that is two or more person joining together and make any plan against some other person is called as criminal conspiracy. But the same thing happens in a union right if they are if their demand is not being fulfilled by the management what they will do they will put a meeting among them and they will talk how they can pretend the management so this is uh, also a kind of criminal conspiracy but once they are registered they will be getting uh, immunity against this offence so this uh, for this offence they will not be getting arrested or they will not be fined for this purpose so this is a, uh, a immunity for the registered union next is immunity for the civil suit so likewise uh, like uh, the criminal conspiracy in civil suit also the uh, members will be getting certain immunity if in furtherance of strike or in furtherance of some other thing if they are being uh, uh, if they are being doing some anything uh, any civil wrongs means they'll getting uh, they'll be getting immunity uh, for their civil wrong and they'll not be punished next is enforceability of agreements that is if they are uh, uh, getting into any agreement with the management uh, they can enforce the management to uh, uh, fulfill all these agreements so this is called as enforceability of agreement uh, so these are all the rights and liabilities of registered trade union which is not given to any other unregistered trade union these are um, uh, special uh, rights and immunity is given to them So thank you.